Jeff Arbio, uh, writer, director, producer of uh, Scramble the Sea Wolves. Where did this idea come from? Well, my father-in-law is a sea wolf, and that's how the whole thing really got started. Uh, I was over at my in-law's house one day, and my father-in-law kept coming in the room. I was watching a football game or something, and he kept coming in and asking. Um, I wish I could somehow have a memory of this thing that I'm going to. I wish I could record this thing that I'm going to, um, knowing that I'm a cinematographer and director and stuff. So my wife finally said, I think my dad wants you to go record this thing that he's doing. I said, oh, what is it? Oh, it's something with his Vietnam buddies. I said yes, and it was on the Midway. And uh, we went and recorded it. And that's when I really found out who the Sea Wolves were. And um, it was a surprise for me to, to hear what these guys did. And I, I started to get a little bit more interested in them as I um, started to hear some of the stories, the guest speakers who were coming up. All right. So, and, and we've got Don Thompson. He's a historian and pilot. He talks a little bit about their mission. All these PBRs and swift boats and tango boats and all the different types, we had a thousand boats down there. And they were constantly being ambushed. And they were always on the short end of the stick. They were gonna lose the ambush, but we'd get a scramble. We'd usually be in the air in around two minutes. We'd usually be overhead in five and, and save the day because uh, the Viet Cong either had to leave or die. You describe this as a forgotten unit. Why is it forgotten? They obviously played a pretty major role here and they were around for at least five years. Why are they forgotten? Well, they were forgotten because they were uh, commissioned and decommissioned in Vietnam. So they were put together there, disassembled there, and um, they were never in the United States, not even one day. So a lot of people didn't even know that they existed. And people in the Navy didn't even know that they existed, even today. Even today, a lot of people still don't know about these guys. And that's why this story is so important to get out there because they really didn't get the recognition even when they came back and told people they were in Vietnam and told them what they did. And actually, I want to play another clip. This is from uh, Jim Armistead. He was a, a door gunner. I don't ever remember being afraid. Been on many SEAL insertions, been on many a gunfight. I don't ever remember being afraid at the time, but I do remember going back to my bunk and laying in my bed and going, oh my God, I am so lucky to be alive. So that's Jim Armistead. So how well are these guys dealing with the, the trauma of their service, even all these years later? Well, I think it's different for each individual. Um, some of the guys, I, I think from what I discovered doing the interviews and what my wife had discovered doing the interviews is that um, if they were in the military for a long time, if they were in the Navy for a long period, they seem to deal with it better. The guys who were there for one year or two years and did the battles and then just came home and it was like they went into these battles and then came home and it just stopped. They had a hard time, I, I believe, and, and the guys that were in it for a longer period, they were able to cope with it better. It took you four years to, to produce this film. These guys were only around for five years. <laughs> So what's your takeaway from, from their service? I mean, how significant, honestly, when I uh, saw the film, I thought more about, oh, the Army did a lot of this. They did the, like the Apocalypse Now and the Air Cavalry. What's your takeaway? Well, the, the Army actually did even start with these guys, and, and this was in the Macon Delta. So the important part of this is that a lot of people, they think of Vietnam, right away they're thinking jungle, you know, heavy bush and stuff. And, and um, these guys were in the Mekong Delta, which doesn't get talked about a whole lot. And they were considered the brown water Navy. You had the, you know, PBRs, which are the river patrol boats. And um, they would go into these canals and get ambushed. And the sea wolves would go in and save them. And so because of their quick, rapid reaction, they started to take over when the army started it. The Navy kind of came in and took over because they could. They were instrument trained. They would fly at night. They would fly in any kind of weather, and that's why the Navy ended up taking over because it was Navy. So they ended up Navy. taking a lot of the heat, though. Did they didn't get much of the credit? <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Jeff Arbayu, uh, great film. I enjoyed it. Thank you so much for being on.
Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it.